Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Red Dusk. I'm your host, Mr. Yugoslavia Lover. But we have the foundation of the Vojvodina Liberation Front. It is quite well known that our Hungarian neighbors to the north is not really friendly with our country. Ever since the coupling of the Hungarian government by the Hungarian nationalists in 1994, the country has done everything in its power to ruin its relations with the other countries and divert resources to their fledgling military instead of feeding their people, alas. In another attempt to distract the populace from overthrowing their rule, the Hungarian government has started new propaganda campaigns to retake their rightful territories. This, of course, includes the Hungarian-speaking parts of our nation, mainly in northern Vojvodina. It didn't take long, until a group backed by the Hungarian government was formed. The self-proclaimed Liberation Front's goal is to wage an insurgency in Hungarian-speaking parts of Vojvodina and force it to join Hungary proper. Planning accomplishments with 200 insurgents, which is only 100 of it weren't caught by our border, con border control. It is sufficient to say that this group won't be doing any damage, while Hungary will be losing another trading partner. The most I can do is robbing a gas station. Oh, look at that. What's the banana? Vojvodina, and then what's this? Western Baka. Cool. So we gotta keep these guys here. Keep these guys here. And we got our South African volunteers. We're here to hold because we have responsible leadership. Uh, did I respond last time? I don't remember. Ever since Tito's unfortunate passing in 1980, the leadership of Yugoslavia turned. <clears throat> From respect and experience to a nationalist populace whose rhetoric changes whenever the wind blows. With the toppling of Milosevic, Yugoslavia has been saved and a new leadership composed of professionals will rule the country once more, which is great. So now we can actually get some political power now. Um, so I this one last time. Uh, we want to do this one for sure. Get more political power. Uh, so, if you want to read this one again, please read it. Boop. We're holding, and you guys are looking okay. 15 combo with his. Not ideal. And then I think I edited you guys heavily last time, so you actually are halfway decent. Um, we're getting more fuel, which is good. Department of Anti-Corruption. Oh boy. Ah. Fighting with the rebel forces. And deadly. Oh, ethnic tensions increased by 15. That's not ideal. Debt management. We owe 38 billion dollars. Ethnic tensions is pretty high. Recruitment campaigns. User popularity. We get more political power after that. What's this one? Congo War? Eh, we're okay. More political power. Nice. And there we go. We're back at 50. Show off our successes. More than, oh, we need more stability. Um, calm down tensions. Address economic problems. Well, in the meantime, I guess. Got 22 days. There you go. Go around them. See what happens. Invasion of Afghanistan versus the British and the Soviets and other Americans. Look at that. Also, I, there was a couple comments yesterday asking, like, uh, I, I was playing as a conservative Soviet um, nation, you know, a conservative route for the Soviet Union, and I stopped playing it before the last beginning of the last episode. It's because there was a save update or an update, and which broke the save basically. So unfortunately, we can no longer continue that path. Uh, many people wanted us in that campaign for us to go. Did she win here? Yeah, maybe. Um, peaceful at the end there as op an option. But unfortunately, like I said, we can't do anything right now. Trench the game is. The save is ruined. Unfortunately. Which sucks. I don't mind using your popularity some more, maybe. Continue to get that political power, maybe. And we gotta wait for the next one to get done. You have 11, 3, 5, 7. We need one more division. So after this one, create another Milosevic. Get more political power. I do like that. Um, and we can lower ethnic tensions. I think that'd be a probably good thing to do. Even though it really hurts army and political advisors, that's not bad. Authoritarian, paternalistic, and nationalist. Uh, broken Brotherhood. After Tito, you still have model socialism. We gotta fix that. The moralized army, we gotta fix that too. Wait, so what does this modify? The Department of Anti-Corruption. Army leader cost, political advisor cost. Well, look at that. Wow. Minister of Education, Minute Finance. It's a lot of consumer goods factors. Construction speed. It's not bad. But 
Political power gain, political power gain. Better state security. Honestly, eventually political power won't matter at all. Wow, look at that. Regional leader. Yeah, could have gotten him. Abolish secularism. Banker. Civilian economy. Good early mob. That actually might help us out a little bit, quite a bit more. But we need more war support. I mean, we do have enough war support. Ah. We were successful there, which is great. Um, what's it like down here? Get down to most star. Industrial developments. Okay, so show off our successes. You lose political power. You get actually more popularity. Ethnic tensions decrease, but you lose stability. Which I don't like losing stability here. Debt management. Now let's see what happens after this. Formation of African Liberation Front. Look at that. The war continues. Great. Nice. Uh, begin negotiations. Negotiations with the rebels. Expand anti-separatist operations. Well, we have that option there. Separatist activity. Address economic problems. Calm down tensions. That might be worth doing. Let's preempt the whistle guy. An opportunist like Milosevic uh, is able to rise to the party ranks that easily shows how deep the problems in our system are. To make sure we don't have the case of another Milosevic, we want to be hijacking the party, we should implement multiple countermeasures, ranging from ideology loyalty checks to the increased vetting of party candidates. It's going to hurt us, but you know what? That's going to give us more economy support anyways in the end, so I'm okay with that. Are you able to actually win here? I don't mind supporting you, but like, I want to make sure we actually win because we don't have a lot of stuff. Local political politician kidnapping. I really don't want to lose any more stability. Give him the money for now. We have six still. Still more political power though. Now we're using it. Nice job. Lean manufacturing, not bad. Well then. Hmm. It's a little ahead of time, but that's alright. I think that'd be okay. We're doing all right. They actually made it in circle too. Look at that. Good job, guys. Happy December first, everybody. What are we making? Roads. Yeah, that doesn't hurt our civvies too much. We can build more stuff there. Show off successes. Let's wait first. So what do I do after that? Youth pioneers. Weekly war sport, but it's only so much. You lose weekly war support for this one. Might not be bad. Liberation Committee, huh? That weekly manpower is strong. That's very, very, very strong. I mean, I want to also do that stuff here, but... Uh, our economic health isn't in a garbage condition. Future of the army. We're going to fix some fix the military. That's it. Okay, interesting. Well, you know what? Let's go with begin negotiations. The strategy Milosevic used to deal with multiple insurgent groups uh, was to crush them using military force. Military force that would cause casualties and equipment lost. And in the end, they wouldn't even be able to defeat them fully. That's why the negotiations will start between the Yugoslav authorities and the multiple rebel groups such as UCK, HLA, and BLA. Failed bank robbery in Vojvodina. After a period of silence, it appears that the VLF, the Vojvodina Liberation Front, has finally made a move against the government by attempting to rob a bank belonging to the Vojvodanska Banka. Ten insurgents broke into the bank, taking multiple people hostage, including the local security. Within half an hour, the local police forces surrounded the bank, quickly rejecting the group's demands for safe passage of money. The insurgents, after some convincing, decided to give up after realizing the dire situations. Surrendering. A move quickly denounced by the VLF leadership. In exchange for the reduced sentences, the arrest gave vital information about the rest of multiple VLF uh, operators in the country, decimating the already weak organizations, and is now left with only 34 estimated fighters. Idiots. Idiots, aren't they? Quite. Quite so. Um, so yeah, I, I double-checked our factories. We're not making that many. Um, so I made sure that we're actually making enough soldiers, factories, and whatnot here. It's not pretty. 
but it's what we got. Negotiating with the rebels. For years, Yugoslavia has been filled with extreme instability caused between the different ethnic groups of the country. It only worsened under Tito's death and the rise of populist Serbian nationalism, fueled by Slobodan Milosevic and his goons, which almost led to the collapse of the country when Slovenia and Croatia declared independence. Although the Kragina War ended in a ceasefire and Bosnia remained in Yugoslavia after the coup, uh, the various rebel groups still resided in the SRs, after causing terrorist attacks almost every day. Oh, what a shame. To put an end to this, Stambolic uh, decided to negotiate with the rebel groups uh, to find a common ground and hopefully bring Yugoslavia to relative stability. Yeah, relatively pretty nice, you know, overall. It won't be perfect, but can this really succeed? We'll see. Economic problem. Now, to secret that Yugoslavian economic situation is in deep recession, is unstable. New economic programs shall be started to solve these problems as fast as possible. Where are we at? <coughs> Alright, so you're there. And now you're up here. We're getting more political power, which is great. And we're slowly able to whittle down the enemy's strength. Negotiating with the rebels, issue of autonomy. Thankfully, the rebels have accepted the invitation to the negotiations, which will play, take place in Zurich, to guarantee the safety of both sides. This first topic of the peace talks is the status of autonomy for Bosniaks, Croats, and Albanians, which had their autonomy decreased over time by the central government in Belgrade. Rebels want the autonomy in Kosovo, Bosnia, and Vojvodina to be restored and decreased, giving more power to the local ethnic groups in the region. Mm, rejected. Mm. We are reformed communists. Oh, look at that. Well, let's read this first. Titoism is a brand of socialist ideology developed and implemented by Tito in Yugoslavia after World War II. It embraces workers and self-management of enterprises through self-governing worker councils. Its economic policies blend socialist principles with allowances for some private sector and market elements. The system promotes ethnic equality and a somewhat centralized authority across a multi-ethnic state. Titoism's uh, a distinctive approach from the other socialist models aims to balance weak worker empowerment ethnic representation, and its unique economic model by devolving certain political and financial situations or powers to enterprises, localities, and republics. Um, how much autonomy? I really don't want to give them too much. Mm. Yugoslavia under Stambolic will try to achieve the greater Yugoslavia idea by engaging in wars with its neighbors after unifying. I'm going to go with this. I do not want an independent Croats. I do not want independent Albanians. I do not want independent Bosniaks. So if this goes bad, then I won't like this. Because I want us all to be one nation. Negotiating with the rebels. Issue of amnesty. With the issue of autonomy being dealt with, the next topic for the talks is the issue of amnesty for the fighters that fought against the government. The rebel groups requested that all the fighters rejoin their respective military branches, and the talks are over without getting arrested by military courts. If negotiations succeed, you'll get multiple generals. You lose political power and stability, gain man power. Huh. Issue of political prisoners. Uh, promise total amnesty. Negotiations succeed. We need that one. Uh, fighters rejoin. You know what? We're going to go with total. Let's see what happens. Issue of political prisoners. With the issue of amnesty being dealt with, the next topic for the talks is the issue of political prisoners that are arrested for either covertly supporting the separatism or trying to overthrow the local government. The rebels argued that most of the political prisoners were arrested after Milosevic took power and were simply challenging serving supremacy in the government instead of trying to break Yugoslavia. Promised to release them. Issue of POWs. Rejected. We're going to need more popularity, aren't we? What happens if I do that? That destroys our political power. Uh, issue of POWs. With the issue of political prisoners being dealt with, the next and final topic for the talks is an issue of prisoners' wars captured in the Krajina War and many other failed uprisings that happened. The rebels want the POWs to be released with the condition that they'll be judged in international courts for any war crimes that could have been committed by them. Rejected. You get a lot of stability if you reject them. What if I happen to accept the proposal? We're all about healing here. I hope. I want to see what happens. 
destroy ourselves so we can get a lot of things here. Results. Oh crap. After days of intense negotiations between the rebels and government, the peace talks have reached a conclusion. The very future of Yugoslavia depends on the results of the talks and the last negotiation succeed. So, more stability. The terrorist attacks will stop. Successful negotiations. Um, successful Yugoslav negotiations. Surprising news comes out of Belgrade today as the leader of Yugoslavia, Ivan Stambolic, has announced that the peace negotiations with multiple violent insurgent groups has been successfully and have been successful, and the order has been restored. The announcement has brought cheers and celebrations across Yugoslavia as ethnic tensions are at an all-time low, and the era of constant violence has finally been closed. Stambolic has resounded his happiness at his achievement and will say, and this will pave the way towards a united and fruitful future, as stated by Stambolic himself. The news has brought mostly positive reaction from foreign observers, with some even applauding coming from the Western powers, with most of the celebrations coming from other global left powers such as China and the USSR. One thing is for certain, however, Yugoslavia's future is looking a whole lot brighter. Finally, some peace and quiet. Yeah. Expand anti separatist operations because we need that political power. The negotiations have, been ended, have ended in an utter failure and will start a new military campaign against the rebels and crushing ones for all. Oh, look at that. Okay. Next generation for communism. Reorganize the army. The army is deeply demoralized and disorganized due to the magnitude of reasons. If we truly want to defend Yugoslavia's sovereign, sovereignty and uh, regain Croatia and Slovenia back, we need to solve these problems and reorganize the army immediately. We can calm down tensions if we need to. We can show off our successes if we need to. But we got better guns, is what I like to see. American, that makes me happy. Love me guns. 1.42, not bad. We're getting there. Debt management, we're not going to talk about that. We'll get to it when we get to it. Because oh, we need more cores, too. Economic problem. We're going to see army. Generate communism for the next generation. Milosevic attained to the white communism is... Oh, crap. Look at that. Oh, this populist nationalism deviating from the Marxist-Leninist path. We should start new campaigns promoting true socialism and unity. It should be great. Look at that stability of political power. Oh, yeah. Um, Romanian Republic. They're social democrats. We really don't like these guys. Century of humiliation. The Eastern Threat. You do not have unique focus tree. Okay. We can't send at most two divisions, which is not ideal. Oh! We just got rid of all the ethnic issues. Okay. Interesting. Well, so much for using all that political power. If I knew I, we didn't have to use all that political power, I probably would not have given him all that political power. Or use it initially. Hey, but that's uh, something we can think about for the next campaign, I suppose. I mean, some of you guys want me to take the other routes, too, which I think would be a lot of fun, actually. To try out sometime, so. Nice. Maybe I should not have done all that uh, negotiating, but we're here. Let me know what you think. Should I have negotiated like that? Should I not have negotiated like that? So we want to go back to what made us great. VLF retreats into Hungary. With the breakout of the war between Hungary and Romania, the last VLF cells has escaped to Hungary to back the whole country in the feudal invasion. The short history of VLF won't even be remembered other than failed bank robbers. Good riddance. All you need to do is hold. How good are you? You're 20 combos, which is not bad. You got engineers. You're decent for what you really need to be. I don't think attacking here is going to be smart, but you know what? I've been wrong before. Address economic problems? Huh. User popularity.
Fund industrial development. Pakistani victory, look at that. Good. Matters of the economy. Oh, not so united production. Oh, we're gonna do this one next time. New capital would not be bad. Yeah, that's not gonna be bad either. Hold on as best you can. They're pushing hard in the north, but still. Look at that. Taliban insurgency, as you should have it. Uh, huh. Which way have you gone? Communist? Normal communist? Cold War? Centralization? Stalin era? Ooh. Interesting. We got plenty of guns. We need artillery. Oh, yeah, we got plenty more artillery. You can make an encirclement, that'd be pretty good, but it's up to you to potentially get encircled yourself. It's quite not on deal. Well, it's quite the bloodbath here, as I'm completely ignoring South Africa. As long as you can hold the line, I guess. How much better part do we get? 0.92. I want to pay back this much money though. Nice, good job. Basic automation. Construction speed. Eastern Army's independence. Now, what is this one? If you're doing this one again, please go ahead. So, we're definitely doing this one next. Fun local parties. A stage de communism you launched, and a new national newspaper promoted communism and socialism to the next generation. A new website dedicated to children and teens has been launched. And this website, stage communism you, what is communism you, you, children and teens like and learn about com uh, Yugoslavia's history, atrocities committed during World War II, and the ideology of communism, of course. Do not bore kids to death while they learn a glorious history. There's also a second flash game, a 2D flash game, has been made. In the game titled Yugoslav Liberator, the player can play as one of the ethnicities during World War II and fight against the Nazis during historic operations such as the Battle of Kadina Jaka. After a certain time, the Nazis will be kicked out of Yugoslavia and the game will congratulate the player. What a nice website. Look at that. Pee pee. Wow. Well, payback $5 billion. Construct weaponry. I mean, we could use it. Anti tank, anti air, IFVs. It's actually not that bad. It's not great. Better consumer goods. So how bad is this? 160 is not terrible. Just for concerns. I'd rather go to early mob. These are factories more and whatnot. Happy June first. Government focus. I don't want to lose any more political power that we already don't have. The try command. Infantry wouldn't be bad. Look at more army XP and whatnot. Why not? Thanks, looking better. Uh, we could disable as Croatia, but that's the easy route. Kurdish defense war, huh? Uh, fun local parties. Without further recruitment efforts, we're going to need a strong local supporter base in Croatia and Slovenia. To achieve a strong local base, that would help us help the committee. Well, fund local parties sympathetic to a cause of a reunited Yugoslavia free of national divides. I think I want to be fair. Second battle of Yong and Pyong. Yong. Thirty-three billion. Nice, good condition. Foreign policy, yeah. Um, we could help other nations, but really, it's focused on us for this campaign. We're not the Soviet Union. Oh. Good job, Iraq. Yeah. 
Yugoslav Liberation Committee. Although the pseudo-nationalist governments of Milosevic had caused Croatia and Slovenia to leave the Union is long gone, so Yugoslavia can't, still can't be reunified easily. The governments of the breakaway countries are beyond reason being blinded by nationalism, nationalism and capitalism. War is the only way to reintegrate them into Yugoslavia. However, not all Croats or Slovenes are blind to the government. So why a new group shall be formed to recruit like-minded individuals for the reintegration of the breakaway states? The group called Yugoslav Liberation Committee will be led by Strip Stupar, a Croatian national communist that is still lord of Yugoslavia. Why else do you facilitate the training and recruitment activities to prepare for their eventual reclamation? While Croatia and Slovenia directly denounce us for funding groups that disable the countries, the committee will continue its activities until ready to reclaim Croatia and Slovenia. Glory to true revolutionaries. After the fall of Milosevic, some expected a normalization of relations or perhaps even a peaceful unification of the Yugoslav breakaway states of Croatia and Slovenia with Yugoslavia. However, peace is clearly out of the question as the hostilities between them flared up once again. These intentions were caused by a speech um, by Ivan Stabolic, announcing the founding of an organization recruiting and trained pro Yugoslav Croats and Slovenes with the eventual goal of reclaiming the two countries. This organization, called Yugoslav Liberation Committee, is headed by Croatian communist exile Stipa Suvar. Suvar has been previously deported from Croatia under suspicion he was collaborating with Belgrade authorities. Croatia and Slovenia denounced the organization and the Yugoslav government, further demanding the closing of the organization. Balkans flare up again and preparing for unification. Depends on the Republic of Croatia's and the Republic of Slovenia's Communist Party popular will receive militia divisions. As the tensions between us and the breakaway countries rise further, it's clear that reunification is very near and we must keep the training activities of those recruited and prepare them to liberate the breakaways. That would be great. When can we pay more debt off? I guess it's nice, but I don't want to do five. Oh, okay. The effects of the Yugoslav Liberation Committee on the Republic of Croatia and the Republic of Slovenia is here. Cost increase. Increase of budget at 60 days. Recruit defectors. Weekly manpower gain decreases by 500. Increased by 500, wow. Spread Yugoslav propaganda. Political power decreased by 15%. Sabotage your army. Prun. Fund pro Yugoslav parties. Oh, this is cool. Well, that could be really good. Increase the budget. This I'm not worried about anymore. Probably four, which is okay. I kind of want to do all of them. Wait a month or something here, or what? Ooh, that's not good. Ah, oh, finally. Mobile warfare, we're pretty good with that. Combined warfare might be the way to go for this campaign. We got a lot of infantry. We do have some tanks. And that attack. I don't really want to do guerrilla warfare. I don't think it makes too much sense for us to do. Surgeon offensives. We do a lot of stability terror tactics. You know, someone go mobile warfare, maybe. Nice. Yeah. Get him over that river, or at least defend the river. Uh, if you can get over there, that'd be pretty awesome, actually. Look at that. Oh, they're forcing attack, too. Oh, man. Oh, man. And they're using militia. We can wait to do this one. Youth pioneers. We can do both these next. But we can do magic of the economy. Our beloved Yugoslavia has not been doing wonderfully in recent times between insurrections, protests, political instability, and so on. And even if some of these problems have already been addressed, we also have problems with the economy. Which must be fixed and resolved once and for all, finally guaranteeing our homeland an average economy for a country like ours. There it is. How much do we get? 0.9291 a day? That sucks. As long as you can hold, we're gonna stay. Looks pretty happy. How many offense, huh? You can't hold, we're gonna retreat. Pretty dicey here. 
All right. Look at that. So political power gains less for them. Uh, increase the budget. So it does it actually really take away their money, but not so united at production. For seven years until now, uh, the Yugoslavian production center has not been in excellent condition. It's due to self-management as Yugoslav workers use this social economic model. This is also due to the failed Yugoslav industries. And with high inflation and embargoes, if the situation continues like this, we can find ourselves in serious trouble both economically and militarily. We must also start improving the economic and military sectors. In the economic sphere, we must, on the other hand, find ourselves in a fiscal crisis. In any case, we must focus on improving the economic sector, otherwise we would have to say goodbye to our ambitions of unification of our lands. But of course, we do not want that. We must fix the problem as soon as possible. So what happened here? Oh, we had to do two patriots. Continue market socialism. Completed end of Milosevic. Pseudo central planning. Developing Serbia. Oh. Chain the economies to Belgrade. Military industrial expansion. An economy to serve Serbia. Continue market socialism. Inspirations from China. Continue limited privatizations. Connect the local economies. Research development. Steady growth. Or pseudo central plan economic planning. Capital development. Locally centralized economies of SRs. Cybernetic developments. That would not be bad to do. New industrialization campaigns. Fruits of our labor. Address IMF problem. Economic rebirth. Hey, you more political power too. You get a civvy and more stability, which you don't need more stability. Collect a presidency. Seems like this one you can get more stuff out of it than this part. But I do want to do the military stuff too. You saw armies have been with problems for a while now. It's time for us to choose a way to determine the future of the army. Happy October. So what does this one mean? Like, address economic problems. Activate mission to address them. This is not too bad either. Give more popularity. I want to use the popularity for more political power and whatnot too. Manpower? That'd be nice. Man, our guys are weak. Death of Osama. Shorter wins, elections, that's fine. Future of the army. Why did you take weapons, huh? All right, so what do we got here? Finish army centralizations, renewed mandate, true patriots. Establish territorial doctrine. Which one's true patriots? Well, I guess it, we can't see it since it's not what we had here. Or renewed mandate.
a new crackdown on nationalism, a renewed force. So we can't go to the right here. Recalibrating the army, professionalize them, armor, unity plan. Wow, increased recruitment and renewed force. National's army reforms. Loyalty to the General Corps. Ethnically homogeneous army. Paramilitary support. An army of patriots. Wow. New generation of soldiers. Establish territorial defense. Uh, the disbandment of territorial defense units was a big mistake caused by paranoia uh, from the Belgrade leadership. With a gun, we can bring back the defense units each republic possessed prior to this disbandment. I can speak. My words do very well. Yes, of course. We do want to give them more time for this one down here, too. If we can't get any more. How, many, how much uh, communism do they have? 19%? Is it every 10% you get another one? Outlawed? <laughs> Look at that. We're so bad, we're outlawed. Average is doing pretty well overall. Nice job. Hopefully he's learning some like CPC's Congress. Oh, Erdogan wins Turkish elections. Sounds like a pretty recent thing to happen. Can you guys actually win here? God, I hope so. Nice job, guys. You actually did something. Yeah, Hungarians and Romanians are just murdering each other until, like, no one's left. So far, not bad. Pay it off more. We're in good condition. Egyptian president assassinated. Very nice. Egyptian revolution. What else we got here? That four divisions. Nice. That's actually really strong. Uh, do I do this one? Another city. Get political power. Better consumer goods. Focus on defense. Oh. Loyalty to the ideology, to organization defense, or loyalty to the land. Hmm. I like the organization, though. New supervisors. Old tactics, new century. Localized army structure. The army needs to adapt to multiple regions and areas to work effectively and properly. Having a localized structure should help with this rel relatively low problems of ours. We actually made more divisions. Well, we didn't really make them, but... We are really out of stuff. Mm, you more attack unit supervisors. To keep the cohesion of our units intact, we need people to supervise all units in the army so no mutinies or anything similar to that can happen. If a supervisor is present in the unit, it'll likely be a second officer for them. But far less merciful than a simple battlefield commander. If examples need to be made of unruly troops, then so be it. That's one quick way to order. Look at this. Democratic Revolution and Romanian victory in the Transylvanian War. As expected. A liberal. Victor Orban is a liberal. Well, it is what it is. Interesting. I need one here. At this rate, we should be able to just steamroll in. Are you guys still fighting down here? Goma faction? In 1997, Zaire was a military destroyed by the combined rebel forces in the east. This, however, did not lead to a period of peace after the disagreements on the Congo's leadership, eventually calling to civil war after Kabila decided to kick out military advisors of Uganda and Rwanda, causing a civil war inside the country, back by those countries. The rebel forces were united under one organization called Rally for Congolese Democracy, RCD united in the global overthrow overthrowing Kabila. The RCD um, 
soon found himself in odds with each other, with each other, both internally and foreign sport wise. This eventually led to an internal split in the movement. The Kisanga faction, led by uh, Wamba Dia Wamba, supports liberal and federalist democracy. Although they have allies with the nationalist MLC soldiers to support their goals, whether it would break down or not is in the future. Uh, on the other side of the majority, RCD faction, located in Goma, led by Gan Maniwa. Goma faction is less idealistic in nature and is more focused on overthrowing. Kabila above anything else, even if it means allying with people who were for Zaire in the past. The Congo is governed by Kabila, promised to crush the rebels, and brings stability to Congo, backed by Soviet aligned African states. This is where I uh, will end with only one victor out of all those three. Who should we have? RCD Goma faction. RCD G movement? Yeah. I think that's the one we want to do. Because you still have the Democratic Republic of the Congo. RCDG. I think so. Not bad. Why is it always a South African where it takes forever to complete, you know? Ah, five billion. Increase the budget. Fine. Tanks looking pretty good overall, though. Never mind. They're damaged. Mm hmm. Ready to coup in Cambodia? Look at that! Happy March first. Nice. Focus on defense tactics. As we stated before, it's a useless endeavor to develop offensive tactics. Most of the countries that border us are either very different ideologically or hostile to us. That's why developing and focusing on defensive tactics and doctrines is far more important than planning to conquer. Well, let's see. Hey, look at that. So this will be the last civil war in Yemen. Cairo factor. Huh? Oh, RCD wins the second Congo war, look at that. Africa's bloodiest war finally ends. Well, we don't care for the Republic of the Congo. It got us what we needed. We won! Yemen was briefly unified under one country until 1994 when South Yemen decided to declare independence, separating the country between the Communist South and the Nationalist North. Tensions between the two countries eventually escalated into war as the Saudis decided to back the North Yemenis, this led Egypt and its new socialist government to back the South Yemenis, causing a local conflict with many sides. The victory of North Yemen would increase Saudi Arabia's power in the region. While well, victory of the South could lead to a unified Arab state. What do we support? Mm. I think we gotta go with the North. The South is gonna lose. Heavily. Easily lose. Yeah, look at that. I mean, they're just getting crushed. We're within the China War, look at that. Nice. We won! We won! Yay! <sighs> Sorry guys, we're always gonna play who's gonna win. I want more manpower. I mean you're just destroying them when we do it like this. Show for our successes, huh? I like construction speed. 
Loyalty to the land. You get more words for what you could actually really use. Loyalty to the ideology. Yugoslavia is the land that we were born and raised in. We should be thankful to belong to certain ethnic groups that make up the population of Yugoslavia. Being loyal to the country itself is more important. As without its great leaders, its ideology would fall, uh, would fall apart quicker than a house of cards. Or support to the ideology. Communism has been the saving force of the country and the ideology that guided us up until this moment. It built our houses and gave us current jobs. The loyalty to it is of the utmost importance. Without it, the unity of not only the armed forces but the entire country would fall apart. Not bad. Look at that smile on Hun Sen. Wow. Can I send only one? Can I send two? Yes. Defend, defend, defend. Happy May. You guys actually win here? Maybe. Chinese are kind of crazy. We'll see what happens. All tactics, new century. With well, the army reforms finishing, the army has been proudly reorganized into a very common fighting force. One against, once again, the pride of Yugoslavia. Small peace operation. I think they'll be fine without us. Fourth Indochina War. We'll see. You guys are doing quite well so far. Cambodia, meh. Yeah. Nash is up. Oh! Well, Nash is up in the Soviet Union. Look at that. The Union's cracked wide enough. That's not good. Oh! Soviet Union, what are you doing, Papa? Con Ken? Oh boy. Chechnya. New generation of soldiers. Every new decade, a new generation of soldiers rise up and heed the call to arms and join the armed forces. The decade now is no different than the others. We can, we can welcome new troops and new officers alike, and the unique and new that they're brought to the table. The question is, will the ideas remain on the table? The rising sun, look at that. Boop. This one maybe rocket artillery, motorized artillery. Hmm. Because you can technically do that. That infantry. Dead. Let's give them more organization too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and three. You try it. And now they're attacking us. Oh god. Oh god. It's weird being on the opposite side of this.
generation of soldiers is not bad. Pseudo economic, pseudo central economic planning. The current ex economic system is far too linked with the socialist markets. Therefore, trying to centralize it completely would be a great effort, and we don't even know how completely whether it bring us more profit than trouble. To reach a conclusion on the mar this matter, the Minister of Economy proposed to the President to implement a pseudo central economic plan in order to partially transition to a market a centralized economy without losing the socialist market system. Nice. Finally, four research slots. That makes it just a wee bit tougher. Uh huh, that's fine. Good. <sighs> Look at all those units we can make. 50. Ah, see, I see. It's fine. As the tension between us and the breakaway countries rise further, it's clear that reunification is very near. We must keep training the activities. Are those recruited and prepared to liberate the breakaways? Absolutely. Um, probably just subs. I don't think it really matters very much. Yeah, we're slowly losing here. Hey, when they do force attack, that means force attack. So protect the capital, too. Can't afford to lose it. You guys actually win here? Perhaps. Perchance. Learning, which is great. That's a lot of units. Looking outwards, well, we'll see. Cybernetic development. If we really want to get involved in a political economic level, or at least try to do so by reviving our economy, we must begin to implement cybernetic machinery, and more simply, computers in the majority of industrial centers. In fact, our country is in difficulty. Given that the majority of countries in the world are now completely cybernetized, once computers are implemented in industrial centers, our industries will be more efficient and our bureaucracies less complicated, being that the majority of the documents will be written on PCs. And we're okay with that. I goes to pay off all the debt, though, first. Not bad. You're not great units, but by God, you're units. How's Africa looking? Not ideal. They're slowly winning though. They're learning here too, which is great. Ah. How about another research slot? Capital development? Mm. To increase the level of industrialization of our country, a clear objective needs to be achieved to, is to industrialize the capitals of our SSRs that have been left to their own devices for far too long, and now they find themselves in poor conditions. Once we improve these factories or build new ones, we can focus on the centralization of the economy. Look at that. Five research slots. That's awesome. Can you guys actually win here? No, I don't think so. We're doing quite well defending in Laos, but I don't think they're going to win at this point. If they lose, that sucks for us, but still. You're doing a very good job defending, but still. Saw that one going. 
They're trying so hard to not lose. What a map out they have? Two to four million? That's a crap ton. They're probably out of guns and whatnot. There you go. Iraq uh, requests spare parts. The Iraqi Air Force has certainly seen better days. Uh, demolished by the Gulf War of the 90s and further degraded by the sanctions that followed. It should come to no surprise that they're in desperate need of spare parts and mechanics. We used to be a key maintainer of Iraqi aircraft before our Western third of sanctions forces to enter cooperation. Now Saddam Hussein is asking the industry staff to throw up promising financial war and increase collaboration for future projects. Mm. Saddam? Can you actually win there? Dreams of United Arab Nation. John Hagelin, who the heck is that? Uh, I'm going to say no for now. How oh, charismatic. Capital development's nice. Locally centralized economies of SRs. Since, as I already mentioned before, our system is all too linked to the socialist market, we cannot afford total centralization of the economy, therefore, we must limit ourselves to local centralization in our SRs. This means the factories in our region. We chain to the most important node of their SR, and the serving government will leave them a certain type of autonomy from an economic point of view. New industrialization campaigns. Even though we've already implemented some reforms and raised some of our factories from ruin, we're still far from a well industrialized nation. Therefore, to achieve this objective, the government has decided to implement new industrialization campaigns um, for the construction of factories in some usable regions of our country. But I think I'm going to end it there. In the next episode, it looks like we might actually end this campaign, perhaps. Um, so, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow, as it looks like we've got a lot of goals here for the future. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.